Hello super user! So as you may have figured out, pretty much every single video on this channel follows a problem and then solution structure. So like I present a problem of something you want to do in Finale, and then I will share with you a solution or maybe two or three of how you can actually accomplish it. This video is going to be slightly different. It's the start of a series I'm going to call The Basics, which is essentially we're going to explore certain features in Finale. So for instance, in this video, we're going to be focusing on libraries what they are, how you can create them, how you can load them, and at the very end, share a couple possible ways you might wish to use libraries in your workflow. And I'm starting this series because I've gotten quite a few emails from people specifically asking about libraries, as well as other emails asking about, you know, specific features in Finale rather than, I have a problem to solve, it's I want to learn more about this feature. And by the way, one of the benefits of signing up for the newsletter is you actually get my email address with that. So you can send me an email about something in Finale and I will respond. So back to libraries. And so what are they? In short, they're just ways you can store part of a document and load them into other documents. Let's see this in action by loading up a few libraries ourselves. So right now I just have a quick simple document loaded up and it is the default in grave style. So pretty much there's been nothing done to it other than just changing the title. And so let's load a library. You can either go to File, Load Library, or you can go to your Document Options and then Load Library. And you'll get this error message that's saying that it will reset some values and that's okay, that's actually the point of it. And then it'll take you to this folder, which is a ton of built-in libraries to Finale that you may or may not know you've had. And here we can do some simple things, like a couple videos ago I talked about Coral Dynamics, and there's actually a library for that under Maestro Font, Coral Dynamics. So let's just select that and then open it up and see what happens. You know, at first it looks like nothing happened, but then if we go to our expression tool, we can see that there's actually a new category here for Coral Dynamics. And if we enter one of the dynamics in, it actually goes above the staff. Now that's really cool, that it does this pretty much automatically for you. Essentially what it's doing behind the scenes is just, just loading up the Coral Dynamics category from another document. So let's do something else. Let's do something crazy and see if in our articulations, we can add a bunch of jazz articulations here. Why? Just for fun. So we can do this by loading up a library, going over here to our document options or even file, load library. Click load library, it'll display the same message. Click yes. And then we can actually go to jazz font and then articulations for jazz articulations. Hit okay. And if we come back here to our articulations tool and try to add an articulation, it looks like nothing's happened. But if we actually scroll down to the bottom, we see all these different jazz articulations. So cool, that's how you can load things from different libraries. And as you might start to be seeing, these libraries are a very good way of importing specific elements from other documents. But that's only half the power of libraries. The other half is you can actually define your own libraries, so that way you can create these custom ones to import custom items for whatever you want into any document you want. So to do that, let's just for fun take this default document and make it jazzy. Let's create a library from the you know default handwritten template and apply all those options over here. So to do that, I'm just going to quickly create a new document with the handwritten style. Next, add a blank staff. Next, and just skip through here. So we have a new document like this. Go to our document options and we can save a library. And as you can see, when you save a library, there's actually all of these different things you can save. And you can save either some or all of these. So for instance, right now we're just saving the document options. So every single setting in these document options is going to be saved into this library. Let's also save the articulations, the chord symbols, the clefs, the default fonts, pretty much all of this. And hit OK. And then we can save it pretty much anywhere we want, but it will automatically take us to the same default libraries folder. Let's create a new one and let's call this custom libraries like that. And then we're going to call this handwritten style. And you can give it whatever name you want. That's just the name I chose. Hit OK and come back to our original document like this. We can go to document options, load library. Yes. And then come over here to custom libraries and handwritten style. That's where we just saved it and hit open. And ta-da, it looks just like the jazz font. All the music looks just like the music over here. Now there are some things that are different, like these titles are gonna be slightly different and the measure numbers are slightly different. But for the most part, we've copied over every single setting. If we go over here to our expression tool, we have all the new dynamics and technique text and expression text and rehearsal markings from the handwritten style. If you go over here to the smart lines, 
and we can see it has several of the custom smart lines. We have crescendo, decrescendo, hold, bend, let ring in the format of the handwritten style. And you can just keep going on and on through most of these tools and you'll find even like with the chord suffixes, it automatically imported all the chord suffixes from the new style. And you can keep going on and on through here. So that is a brief introduction to libraries. And as you can see, it's very useful if you have you know settings or elements from one document and you want to transfer them over to a new document. Now, if you have the exact same settings or elements for every document, consider using document styles or templates. Link to a video on how to do that in the description. But if there's something that you want to import to like this one particular document or you're only going to need every now and then, a library is a great way to do things. So that's it for today. That is a intro introduction to libraries and finale. If you found this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button so I know you want more content just like this. And each week I post new videos about how to use finale to its fullest, so if you don't want to miss out on any of those, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell so you get notified every time a new video comes out.